Welcome to the Oklahoma City Real Estate Show with Landon Witt. You are about to learn hyper-local market knowledge happening right now in the Oklahoma City real estate market. This is your fresh weekly report on housing conditions in Oklahoma City that will enable you to make smarter investment decisions and gain insight on local trends. Landon is a genuine, self-made top realtor in Oklahoma City with millions of dollars in real estate closed every year and hundreds of satisfied clients. He's top rated by sites like Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, and Homes.com. He's actually been there and done it. He's a successful investor, property manager, and residential broker who's worked with clients from all over the globe to help achieve their real estate goals. This program will help you gain the much sought after hyper local information that's vital to making real estate decisions, whether you live right here in the city or across the country. Welcome to the Oklahoma Real Estate Show. Here is your host, Landon Witt. Welcome to episode 126 of the Oklahoma Real Estate Show. On today's show, we're going to be talking a little bit about new and up and coming things going on uh, in the downtown urban core. Everything from the zoo to a new submarine that they're going to be putting south of the park. Also going to be talking a little bit about a $15 million in funding for your company. Uh, you've got a little bit of criteria there, but that's companies with new projects that lead to diversification, market expansion, or supply chain resiliency. You know, Oklahoma City is an amazing town. I know they don't have mountains and they don't have an ocean, but if you can really get past that, those two huge things, and of course the crazy winds, and of course the crazy drought, and the crazy temperature swings of 100 degrees plus in the summer and below zero in the winter, uh, if you can look past all that, the city itself has made incredible uh, advances in trying to make this city more desirable, more family friendly. And it's really been incredible to watch the seven years that I've been here and investing here in Oklahoma County and the, the surrounding cities, uh, our surrounding counties and surrounding cities. And so it's, it's, it's really been a journey. And I think uh, you investors that have properties here, you remember the days when it was, you know, really nothing going on. And then all of a sudden more and more started coming on. And that's really been going on now for multiple decades. Uh, this MAPS program that they have, which is a penny cent tax that is taxed. Uh, and then after seven years, they basically pay with cash. Uh, whatever it is that they voted in to tax for. And that guarantees that every seven years you have a brand new kind of push of new infrastructure that gets started. And a lot of these are really big structures like the convention center or scissor tail park, 130 acre park downtown that take many, many years to build. And so you kind of have this construction feel going on after a maps is finished. And then of course, during that construction, then they're getting taxation for the next one. So by the time the new release stuff comes out, it's a year or two or three without new construction. And then bam, all the next map stuff is coming on. So it really has a way of kind of creating a sense of always construction going on, always something new, which obviously incentivizes and just inspires other businesses to do the same. So very interesting stuff. I want to get into a couple of key things that you'll be seeing in the next couple of years popping up around the Oklahoma City area. South of Cesartel Park downtown, the USS Oklahoma City is to be displayed in the park. Plans are moving forward for a commemorative display featuring components of multiple USS Oklahoma City Navy vessel vessels just south of the lower section of the Scissortail Park on the north shore of the Oklahoma River. The USS Oklahoma City Park Association is a nonprofit, privately funded organization to commemorate all USS Oklahoma City named naval ships. 
all of which served with honor and distinction. The proposed display would feature the submarine sail and dive plans from the USS Oklahoma City and components of other USS Oklahoma City vessels, including the anchor and ship's bell, along with uh, narrative panels depicting the history of the two ships. The group along with the city is seeking a long-term loan from the U.S. Department of Defense to help fund the project, there would be yet another project along the Oklahoma River as Scissortail Park now stretches its shore and completely, a completely renovated Wiley Post Park to the south, along with dozens of projects in the Boathouse Row area, that being like the river sport and all that. And uh, another important thing to note, that river is actually legal to navigate uh, if you've got a city permit. So if you've got the Oklahoma City, if you're you know, like with our group sailing on, on Lake Hefner and you have a boat permit to be on that lake or um, you could have one to be on, uh, oh, I can't think of it right, like Stanley Draper, um, you can also go on the river. There are speed limitations on the river. I forget what they are, and you can't ski, no swimming, that kind of thing. But if you want to drive your boat along there, it's kind of neat. They they actually have a couple boats that are dinner cruise boats that they run up and down the river that you can uh, just charter out. And so this will give more stuff to see along those river boat rides. And of course, the closer you get to the boathouse district there, you've got the Olympic uh, training facility and some very, very fit young men and women uh, that are over there. It's, a, it's incredible. Their legs are probably wider than my head is. Um, the rowing crew, super, super fit, folks. Uh, okay, so we got the USS Oklahoma City. Uh, that's great, but not really super pizzazz. What about the zoo? The zoo's starting now on a marine mammal habitat. They filed plans for that. Uh, the new expansion is located in the eastern section of the park, overlooking the Zoo Lake, and encompasses 3.5 acres, including existing sites for the Zoo Noble Aquatic Center, Pollinator Garden, and the zoo is establishing a, an additional pollinator garden throughout its grounds to replenish habitat for native pollinators. Uh, this, uh, the zoo California, uh, excuse me, the fil the facility will be home to the zoo's California sea lions and seals. This additional space will provide an expanded and enriched setting for these coastal animals with rocky, uh, outcroppings and other design features to mimic their natural habitat. There's also going to be a, and this is my favorite part, a large indoor outdoor penguin exhibit. I'm excited to bring my kids over there to see the penguins. The design features uh, improved mammal habitat, included an outdoor amphitheater for educational presentation and caretaker chats, beach areas for the animals to nose-to-nose -nose views of the sea lions and the seals, and an interactive sand area for kids, special event space, and much more to come. That place will be ready in about 2025 it's going to start construction here in 2023 about the same time that the state-of-the-art uh, ob observatory this is an indoor observatory that's going to be at the oklahoma uh, science museum which is just right beside the zoo uh, they've added a multi-million dollar uh, digital display uh, kind of sky thing above you. Uh, when you go, uh, you can just look, and and supposedly the only competing, uh, you know, observatory, digital observatory of its size is in China. So we, it'll be China and and Oklahoma <laughs> for the digital observatory. Uh, so you can see all the star formations in there in in very very great detail. So. Something to look forward to in the next couple of years. Uh, I want to jump to the apply now to the Oklahoma Innovation Expansion Program. This coming from City Council, or not City Council, the uh, Chamber of Commerce. 
announced that applications are now open for the Oklahoma Innovation Expansion Program, which will provide up to $15 million in funding to companies with new projects that lead to diversification, market expansion, or supply chain resiliency, which is great. All three of those metrics we love in real estate. We love a market with diverse job market, expanding market or or increasing uh, amount of workers and and population and resiliency right resilient to all the ups and downs of the economic turmoil so they're incentivizing 15 million dollars for companies that apply uh companies have a minimum annual payroll of 625,000 with a minimum capital investment of 50,000 to qualify for the OIEP program o- the Oklahoma Commerce will also consider the ratio of private sector dollars leveraged from program awards the applicant's number of existing and projected jobs, the average wages paid to employees, and anticipated increases in sales because of the expansion project. Now, just to give you an example, in 2022, more than 75% of the projects that submitted were submitted to the program received funding with a total of $9.241 million dollars through this funding of 125 projects, companies projected more than 750 jobs would be created with a total payroll of nearly 36 million in varying sectors. So if you or your company or someone's company that you know uh, may be uh, interested in this, they can check that out at the uh, Chamber of Commerce or just by Googling Oklahoma Innovation expansion program oklahoma innovation expansion program you could be up uh, available to get these grants and again <clears throat> this is right in line with the consistent movements that oklahoma has made to diversify its risk remember we are extremely risk averse from a oil collapse that happened in the late 70s or really the early 80s uh, here and so it created this kind of uh, push this extra push to not put all of our eggs in one basket which is funny because we're right at they're going into the easter weekend at the recording of this so i know we're going to be going my folks and i was actually raised in austin texas which a lot of what this town's doing is kind of reminds me a little bit of what Austin was jumping off into in the 90s. But I'm I'm driving down to Austin this weekend. Uh, you'll be hearing this recording after Easter, of course. But we're we're going into Austin. I've, I've got a four year old and a nine year old. Well, he'll be nine next month. Um, but uh, we're driving down there to hunt Easter eggs uh, in Nana and Papa's backyard. Uh, they're super excited about that. So I did hear not too many people are celebrating the Easter holiday. What a shame. A lot of fun. A lot of fun with the weather changing and going and, and shopping for the eggs. So I digress. As far as jumping into the sales and going forward for you loyalists of the Oklahoma Real Estate Show... We're going to be changing up the template coming up. I'm going to break it into more of the categories that it had before where we had the news and then we've got uh, guests and we've got all kinds of kind of stuff crammed, scheduled uh, every week coming out. That way you can have more up-to-date news on this show. I think that's going to be really, really important as we go forward into the shenanigans of what all the federal government's doing some things, new developments in the state government. I want to be able to talk about these in real time as we're making decisions going forward. So stay tuned to the Oklahoma Real Estate Show. You can you can subscribe to this with your podcast feature. Make sure that you are, are locked in with that because there will be some episodes 
you say, well, it's not for me, but there will be other episodes that are going to hammer directly into where you are right now. I'm going to be unlocking your uh, property purchasing mind. I'm going to be empowering your rights with discussions about uh, all types of legal uh, things you might not know about with your deed of your home and and things that will help you to weather the future of uh, federal decision making that has made it extremely uh, scary for a lot of us uh, looking going, we hope it will work out great. And this is talking about the centralized currency coming up. The Fed Now program releasing uh, in June, though, so we're going to get into all these different things and how they're affecting our portfolios. How do we make decisions? And, and, and most importantly, just the knowledge of the property, the American property rights, just having that in your mind is amazing what kind of difference it makes you walk around with as an American landowner. It is something uh, that our founding fathers believed very much so in, and I want to empower you with that knowledge and that robustness about the walk and tone of your voice being an American landowner. And yes, if you have a house that you own, there's land under that house. So I mean you as well. I don't just mean farmland and this kind of thing. Landowning is a home that you own in America and of course farmland and all the rest. So thank you for listening and I look forward to catching you on next week's episode. Hey, it's Landon Wood here, real estate broker. If you're interested in buying or selling in Oklahoma City or the surrounding cities, please visit oklahomarealestateshow.com. I look forward to seeing you there.